live planned as well, not spontaneous. I'm getting good at this. I'm getting good at doing these lives without them just being spontaneous. So, so today I am live on Wicked Wonders instead of Wagging Wonders because I am talking about recall. We were in the Facebook group uh, yesterday and I put it to a vote between recall, reactivity, uh, socialization, as well as building independence. And I think it was quite an overwhelming win for boosting your dog's recall. So we're gonna today talk recall for all occasions, recall for real life. We don't just want recall um, in a super controlled way, in a super controlled environment. Um, you know, that's one of the first things that you know you might do in, in a puppy class where you, someone holds back your dog and recalls them. Um, and you recall them even, and they come back. And that's, you know, a fun way to start out your recall, but it's not recall for real life. Because in real life, your recall, your dog isn't gonna be facing you, ready to run for you. In real life with our whippets, we have lots of things that we are up against. Our whippets are fast, which is an understatement. Our whippets are fast, they are instinctive, they are going to run after things that they deem exciting and on some occasions they might run if they are a little nervous. So we really want to have the recall for our whippets nailed. We want that recall rock solid. We want that recall real life ready. We want it life proof. So I'm going to talk about a few different topics for your recall today. We are going to talk about creating clarity and consistency. We're going to talk about where you should be practicing your recall. And we're going to talk about how to not be the fun police. It's really easy to be the fun police. Um, so we've got loads of things to cover, loads of things to cover. So we're going to start by covering like the first topic which is creating clarity for your recall. Recall is one of these things where basically, by recall I mean we want your whippet to come back when you call them. We want you to be calling your whippet, you know, they're running in the other direction to start with, you call them and they whiplash that head back to you and they run for you. And they're going to come straight back to you and we're going to either give them food or a play or, or even put them back on the lead depending on the circumstances. But the key here is the whippet comes back to you. And that is what a recall is. What, very often, as humans, we are a little bit grey though. Uh, we are not always like super clear. We're not always really clear and concise. So sometimes recall can mean, if we're not being clear, oh, uh, pay attention, you don't have to come all the way back. Or sometimes it can mean, ignore me. <laughs> sometimes, we're, sometimes if we've not been clear and concise and we shout them and they've learned to ignore us, they're going to keep ignoring us. So we really need to think, what do I want my whippet to do and how am I going to get them to do it? So you might have been uh, taught, um, again, like in classes or um, in, in sessions, or you just might do it instinctively. You might call your whippet by calling their name. Um, so you might be going, Fido, Fido, Fido. And you might, I can't use my dog's names or they're gonna be alarmed. Um, Fido, Fido, Fido. And you think they're gonna come running instantly. And I can totally like uh, understand why you might do that. Uh, but the problem is, um, how often do you think you use your dog's, your whippet's name day to day? How much do you think you've used your whippet's name in the last hour within their company? How often do you use their name when you're on the phone to someone? Do you think you can rely on just using your whippet's name to get them back? Do you think it's sensible to rely on the name? Thinking about how often, think seriously, how often do you say your dog's name and it doesn't mean come here, you're gonna get paid. And it just means, we're talking about Fido. Fido's doing some things today. Fido did the funniest thing. Fido did the most annoying thing. <laughs> it's probably quite likely in my house. Um, so they're getting used to their name meaning nothing. We want their name to have uh, value, but we also want to make sure that for their recall, it means something to them. Because if it doesn't mean something, they can't do it. If we're not being clear, we can't be frustrated when they don't always come straight back. So being clear and concise on a recall means you have their name, but you also have a command. You really want to have a recall command uh, with you with you, you want to use a recall command because that is going to make it clear to your dog what you want them to do. What you're going to say is you're going to shout full of excitement, Fido, come! And Fido is going to hear that and know that when they get to you, they get paid. Rather than shouting Fido and Fido thinking, God, you again? You're always saying my name. 
puppies on his back, he's unaffected by this. Um, rather than them thinking, oh God, you know, it's just you wittering, I'm gonna carry on. Clear, being clear and concise is so helpful and it's so important. So you wanna think, how, how am I gonna call my, my dog back to me? How am I gonna get them back to me? And then you need to be thinking clearly, what is the rule system I'm gonna set up? And by that I mean, uh, you, you have to, if you want your recall side, you have to reward them every time you come back. You have to make sure that your Whippet knows when you call them, they get back to you and it pays. If it doesn't pay, they're probably not going to come back quite so fast next time. Maybe not even at all. So you need to think when you shout Fido come, it ends in a good consequence. <laughs> Arkle's gone, why am I coming again? No, good to sleep Arkle. Um, so you want it to always end in a good consequence. So. You want to be thinking when you're using that recall cue as well. Clarity again. I don't use my dog's recall cue just to get them across the house necessarily. I don't use my dog's recall cue to get them to turn direction with me on a walk. You know, if, if Arkle's one way and I'm walking the other and I say, Fido, come. I don't want to do that on the lead because that's not clear and concise. I'm not asking him to run towards me and he's going to get paid. And I see people do this quite a lot and it's totally unintentional, but... That's not recall. That's probably just me nagging at my dog just the tiniest little bit. Um, and I, I want to be clear and concise where the recall means you run back to me and you get paid. It's not me just like nagging at you to do something you don't want to do. So we want to make sure that you are being really clear and concise, that recall is fun, that they enjoy it, they want to come to you, you know. You've got to be exciting, first of all, when you're calling your whippet. Um, you've got to be exciting. You've got to be better than the world around you, which is a, a hefty call when you think about it. Um, when you think about it, you've got to be better than all the things. And that's going to that's gonna take some practice. You've got to make sure you're exciting. You've got to make sure you're engaging. And you've got to make sure your reward is, is something your, your whippet finds rewarding. Because if you're giving them something they don't find rewarding, then they they're not going to come back next time. For example, if you're giving them like a, let's let's just say for the sake of example, you're giving them a like pet shop training treat, like a wag treat or, or something like that. Do they find that wag treat better than chasing the other dog? If you call them off the other dog, they come back and get a wag treat. They're probably not going to do that again. That's probably not actually that rewarding. Whereas if you know um, they like a little bit of like cheese or a little bit of sausage, and that is rewarding to your dog, and you call them and they get it, we are rewarding them for a recall, and that's absolutely what we want to be doing. So, as I'm going along as well, you're always welcome to comment, give me reactions of some variety, I don't understand how it all works. <laughs> if you have questions, ask them as I'm going, but you wanna be excited, and the best tip that I can give for owners of whippets and slight hands of any kind is that movement is exciting to them. Bread to run, they're bread to chase. That's often the problem, is they're running, <laughs> they're running after something else, right? I'm sure some of you can, can understand what I'm saying. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, so, you know, they like to chase, so why not tip that on its head and say, if you run back to me, I'm probably gonna run a little bit with you or take a few steps away, or maybe as I'm calling you, I'm gonna run. Because that's gonna get your attention. That running away is gonna trigger that instant, natural instinct to run and chase in your whippet. And that's what's gonna get them back to you a little faster. I very often will use running, I don't like running, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I will very often use running as a reward for my dogs. My whip, you know, I've got three whippets, they come back to me, I'm gonna uh, run a little bit, praise them, and then feed them for running with me a bit. Because that's, that's what they enjoy. So I'm gonna make sure it's an enjoyable experience and I'm gonna use movement, you know. If my whippet's in that direction, you know, let's say it's facing that wall um, and I want them to come back, I'm probably gonna run just like diagonal, oh, did you see the not diagonal? Yes, diagonal, um, diagonal from them, um, calling them, Fido, come, as I'm running the other way, just so that they catch their eye and they're gonna run at me um, because they go, oh, something's caught my eye, gonna run. Oh, it's you, oh, even better. Oh, I got to chase you and I got food, double the reward. So first part is we wanna be clear and concise. We're using a command, we're ju just using their name. We wanna be clear, we don't want them to get used to ignoring a recall command. So we wanna be clear and concise. So they've got a recall command and, well, the name and a recall command. We want to be making sure that we are clear, we 
We are using it when we want them to come to us. We want them to come back. So we're using it then and we're maybe adding in a little bit of movement. Michelle says, running is a great idea. We'll give it a go with it. Yes, let me know how she gets on with that. I'm not, I'm not really built for running, but <laughs> it doesn't even have to be a run. I will say, you know, sometimes just an exaggerated walk is enough. <laughs> I'm sure you're all more active than me, but that's what I will go for if needed. A bit of movement just gets them going. Oh, what's going on? Um, maybe it's where I'll use like a chaser toy as well, you know, with a fluffy bit, um, with, you know, the fluffy bit of toy with a long, you know what I mean, rope thing. Um, and then I might run with that too. Movement is, is magical as far as I'm concerned. My dogs will follow my movement once we get the hang of training. Arkle's a work in progress. He's my five month old puppy. He's getting it though. If I, if I change direction on a walk, he, he does pretty much nearly all the time instantly go, oh, I follow you because it pays to follow you. Now I'm going on a sidetrack of movement, but I still think movement's great, but maybe that's a topic in itself for another day. So I also said, I'm trying to stick to my notes because otherwise I go a bit off track, as you all know. I also know, oh, brilliant, thank you, Esther, um, that um, I said, uh, where, where do we practice? Where do we practice recall? Um, and I think that's a really good um, thing to always consider. People sometimes assume that the best place to practice recall is somewhere that's like fenced in. So like a local park um, or, or a higher out paddock uh, or something like that. And that can be a good place to practice recall. Um, you know, uh, particularly maybe the hideout paddock, but um, if, you're, if you're just practicing in the local park in a fenced in place, that wouldn't be my first place to go. Because if it's like a dog park, like say, I don't, we really have them here in the UK, but we definitely have places where People let their dogs off in a fenced in area and there's a lot of parks near me that are like that. I'm not gonna ideally practice my recall there, personally. Why am I not gonna practice my recall there? Because, one, there's loads of distractions. If I'm starting from scratch, I don't want my puppy going, oh my God, it's Disneyland here. I wanna, I wanna run and play with like everyone possible. I've added hundreds of distractions before my, my dog has learned recall. Two, and this is a big one for me is, if I've gone to a fencing park where there are loads of other dogs and people, I might have to question why those other dogs maybe are in a fencing park too. Is it because they're a little overexcited, they have no recall, and maybe they're gonna interfere with my dog who is trying to learn recall or I'm trying to improve a recall with? I probably am gonna assume if they had a choice and they had a good recall, they might not be in that place. So I'm probably not gonna practice my recalls there when I'm starting out. Instead, I'm going to take my puppy out, I've got a puppy, on his long line, probably, just to start with, um, somewhere that's quiet, that's nice and open, where we can have a bit of an explore together, we can see what's coming from a distance, and we can practice our recall with no distractions. Because we want to start right from the start with a recall, and we want to start with no distractions, so that we get it right. It's that clarity again, we want it to be clear to our dogs, when I say, Fido, come, and they come back, they get paid. <laughs> Michael keeps waking up when I do that. It doesn't even sound like his name, but he knows what coming, so I might have to stop saying that too. Um, but I want that clearness and I want that clarity. And if my puppy or my, if my adult dog or my teenage dog is getting distracted by things going on, they're learning that their recall isn't something they, they have to do. They're learning that it is optional and they can tune you out. You know, they can tune you out quite easily. So we're gonna start where there's not many distractions. Somewhere nice and open, somewhere nice and quiet, somewhere nice and peaceful. <laughs> Maybe that's just where I like my walks in general. But that's where I would start it, like out in the real world. Ideally, I'd start it in my back garden, but you know, it depends on the size of your house and your garden. Not everyone else has that option. So you're gonna start out somewhere quiet. You're gonna make it easier. Um, and then as they get better, you can start to go to those busier places. You can start to add in those distractions. When I'm starting out, or if I have doubts on my dog's recall, I'll probably just use a trailing line, like a long line, not a retractable lead. I'm just gonna leave it to trail. So that if they run, I can grab them. Why would I do this? I would just do this so that my dog doesn't rehearse running away from me. Um, the, speed, the speed of whip it can go versus the speed I can run or capture them if they went, got into any trouble is incomparable. <laughs> um, I remember Arthur was a nightmare as a teenager. He would just see a dog and before even thinking, he would be like, 
gone. I was like, uh, 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 I can't even shout you, you've, you've gone. It's it's too late to shout you. I can't shout as quick as you can run. Um, he only needed to do that, I think, once, maybe twice, and I put him on a long line. Uh, because I didn't want him to continue harassing other dogs, which wasn't fair. Nor did I want him to continue to rehearse absolutely blanking me and finding his value elsewhere. So I'm going to use that long line. Um, just just to start with. I can fade it out later. It's quite easy to fade out once they've got a good recall. But if I'm going to start working around distractions, one of the main things I'm going to do is I'm going to make the distraction and disengaging from that distraction, so looking away from that distraction, rewarding. And that's why the long line's really helpful, because if you've got an impulsive dog, they've seen a dog in the horizon, you've got no long line, dogs run. It's too late. If you've got that long line, they might run to the end of it, and then you can just stand still. And you're gonna either stand still and wait for them to look back to you. And when they do, you're gonna praise them, you're gonna treat them, you might run around with that movement we talked about earlier. Or if they're really fixated on something, I'm gonna use movement again just to get their attention. I might not even say their name. I might just be like, oh, you could be busy. I'm gonna walk, you know, the length of the long line, diagonal, parallel, one of the two, until you check in with me. When you check in with me away from the super exciting thing, which has more value, which pays more, me because you're gonna get to me i'm gonna feed you i'm gonna play tuggy maybe or i'm gonna run a bit more exactly where i am with luna at the moment just like arthur yeah um, and it's really tricky and i think teenage dogs are horrible for it they're just impulsive to like an insane level it's like oh there's a dog bye or i think he ran all sorts of imaginary things until i whipped that long line on him for a bit um and it was only a few times i'd let him off it so i was a bit <laughs> frustrated with arthur but I, with a long line, he can't, he can't rehearse it. Um, I, with, with Luna, she won't be able to rehearse it. And I know it's frustrating carrying around these long lines. Um, I just get a really long one. And if they go to run, just need slightly good reflexes. Um, I, I'll come to that in a moment. Um, I, yeah, so I, I love my long lines with uh, rubber woven into them. They're tracking lines, I think they're called. Or you can get the biathane ones, which are uh, like waterproof, slip proof. Magic proof. Um, I haven't got one yet, but I have I have the rubber tracking lead. It just means I can't rehearse running off, basically, and I think that's really important to recall, and I think it's something we often miss. Um, Susanna says, somehow I'm not as exciting compared to Stinky Poo to roll in or eat. Oh, you see, now I'm gonna have to tell a story. It's really boring, <laughs> I think, to some people, but I love telling this story. Um, Michelle says, love the long line you recommended. Oh, good, I'm glad, I'm glad it's helping out. Um, so, I think that's a really good point, um, Susanna has made it. Some things are really exciting, like by their nature, we're not quite as exciting. Um, fox poo, rolling in it, was Arthur's favourite. It was absolutely, dis he could detect that like miles off. If I saw him run when he got older and it wasn't a bad dog, it would be to fox poo. Um, and it really, really annoyed me um, because as you all know, it, it, it stinks. Um, and he liked to do it in summer as well. And I'd have to walk him home because I'm walking quite far from my house. The whole way thinking, oh my goodness, Arthur, did you have to? Um, and so one day I just decided um, we would use it as an opportunity. There was there was a, a pile of fox poo. I knew it was fox poo because he'd run at it and rolled in it once. When he was slightly towards the end of finishing with that fox poo, I called him to me. I treated him. And I said, okay. And I sent him back to that fox poo uh, so he could roll in it again. And we did this quite a few times. Um, we decided today was the day we are going to beat the fox poo. Um, and I kept calling him back and sending him to it. Why was I doing that? You might be thinking, why on earth would I send my dog back to fox poo over and over again? And it comes down to my dog finds the fox poo more rewarding. Or, what you know, insert your distraction here. You know, it doesn't have to be fox poo. Um, if, if my dog finds fox poo more rewarding and I recall him and I only give him some food and we walk off, my recall is now a negative, potentially, potentially. Maybe not always, but potentially. Whereas if I recall him and I say, do you know what? Go back and enjoy your fun. That recall just got boosted loads because he now knows his recall is not the end of fun. And I think that's a really important thing for, for dogs to learn. And it's something I work quite a lot with, with, with my customers and my dogs is that we can, we, I want to be able to recall my dog off a thing and they know that sometimes they might get to go back. Um, so, you know, it could, you could do that with other dogs, you could do that with distractions at home. Um, <laughs> I said, okay, I might need to be brave and give that a go with Wally. Yeah, I only needed to do it, honestly, that five minute session, um, I had my highest value treats with me anyway, and every time in the future I never had to release him back to it again, he came back instantly from Fox Boo. <laughs> I was like, okay, 
it was worth it. There were some people watching nearby who I think were a bit concerned about what on earth I was doing and why I kept sending my dog back to Foxboo. But it it worked wonderfully. I never had to... Re he, he would find Foxboo and instantly I'd call him and he'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm back. Just because we probably did it maybe six times, maybe seven, within a few minutes. He was like, oh cool, recall is excellent. Doesn't mean I have to finish with the lovely, delightful fox poo that I love rolling in and getting all over my collar and my lovely collar and harness. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's an important thing to consider is sometimes, maybe, we get access back to the thing. I think I've gone on a tangent there. Um, Michelle, that's why we let Luna off so she has a choice afterwards. Yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I, I see what you're saying there. Um, I think I do. Uh, maybe I'm just reading your conversation. So, um, I, I think it's really important. I think it's something that's hugely underrated. You don't have to do it with fox poo. You don't have to do it with poo of any kind. I just got sick of washing my dog down after every walk um, when I sacrificed one walk um, and he came home. He, he did stink quite a bit. But I will say at the end of it, I, I, kept, I released him back and he went, please stop. <laughs> he was like, I, I am done with the fox poo mom. I was like, are you sure? Okay. And then sending him back, he was like, please, please can we go? <laughs> I'm bored of this game. He was like, I'm so bored of it because it's also, it's also something I'm allowed to do now and that instantly makes it that little bit less exciting. Um, I definitely find that when it's something we're like, oh god, don't do that, come on. They're like, this is good. I like this game. Um, but I totally got on a tangent. I didn't mean to that. So what is the last thing? I don't even know where I am time-wise. <laughs> I'm promising not to go too long today. Oh, super. So the last thing I was going to say is, I suppose, in line with what I was saying there. Um, and it's like, don't be the fun police. The biggest, uh, one of the biggest problems I see with people, and it's always unintentional, you know, when I say these things, it's never that people are deliberately doing these things or, you know, anything like that. It's just sometimes, you know, I'm guilty of, I'm guilty of a lot with my own dogs, um, of not realising what I'm doing. It's unintentional, so I, I totally get that, but sometimes we're the fun police. Sometimes our recall, we only do it when our dogs want to do something. Like run at the fox poo, like run at the other dog, like run after a rabbit, like oh, Arthur loved running after scents, he was like a track him with it, I don't know. Um, he would love to do that. If I only call my dog when they are having fun, I become the fun police. I become the person going, oh no, 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 we're not doing that today. No, 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 we're not doing that today. No, this isn't very funny. No, let's come back to me. If I keep doing that, I become quite negative. I lose a little bit of value because I'm only doing it when they're doing fun things. Um, I'm only doing it when they're having a good time. Um, and that's going to make my recall pretty negative. It's not going to be very fun to come back to me because we only ever come back to me when I was, as a dog, already having fun, if that makes sense. I think I might have just said a load of words there. Um, so, you know, if I call my dog only when they are having fun and I want, I want them back because they're having fun and it's going to spill over, whether it's running off or harassing some poor human enjoying their walk, um, if I only do it then, it's problematic. So I don't want to be the fun police. I never want to be the fun police to my dogs. I don't want to nag them. I don't want to nag them to death. I don't really do a lot, a huge amount of talking to my dogs on walks. I do a little bit of whittering, as I'm sure you can all imagine. Um, but I don't do a lot of, do this, do that, do that, come on, come back, come back, come back, come back. When I do a recall, it's fun. I'm going to recall them, you know, when they've got good, when there is like a low distraction, but it's going to pay off hugely. I'm going to make sure it's a good game. And I've got to make sure that they can um, in, enjoy, enjoy their walk quite well. I've got to practice that recall when there's no need for it as well. Like, some, you know, you're just having fun. You look like you might come back anyway. I'm going to call you back because that's going to build value in coming back to me. And it makes them realise I do not only call you when you are otherwise engaged, when you are occupied. You know, I'm not nagging at you while you're enjoying something. Like, think about something you enjoy, you know. Um, it might be watching TV and suddenly there's someone stood in front of you every time you, you turn it on going, oh, actually, let's, let's go and do something else now. And you've been waiting to watch this programme for ages, let's say. And you're like, oh, God, it's you again? Go, go away, I was watching that. Um, or better comparisons, I'm sure someone else has them. You don't want to be that one. You don't want to be the one where like, oh god, you recalling me again? You want recall to be exciting, you want it to be fun, so you want to practice it when you don't need it to. But you want to not do it obsessively. You've got to get the balance, you've got to get that balance of calling you, it's fun, and now you can enjoy your walk. And maybe I'm going to call you again, and it's fun, and now you can enjoy your walk. But I'm not, I, I don't want to be that um, owner, um, which you know, again, no one's but where they're like, oh my god, he's going slightly outside. 
Fight come. Fight come. Fight come. Fight come. Ah, uh, uh, fight come. Oh, God, I'm tuning myself out doing that. <laughs> Never mind the dog. Um, I don't want to be constantly constantly having to call my dog back and I don't want to constantly be calling them back when they're having fun you know my dogs stay close to me on walks because they know it's quite fun uh, they always range close because we have lots of fun we play lots of games we might look a little crazy to some people but I know my dogs will come back when I call them um, and they tend to range close they tend to want to do stuff I mean Arkle offered me a middle the other day he was like so when are we doing the middle game so let's, let's do it now then <laughs> that's what you want to do so don't don't be the fun police. It is your dog's walk at the end of the day. I know you're with them too and you've got to do it 50-50. I get that. But you've got to let them decompress and enjoy themselves a little bit. If that's made sense. Who knows? Um, so, 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 so. We talked about a few things today. I'll recap them. If you have any questions, you can pop your questions in the box thing that is there somewhere. We've talked about creating clarity for your recall, making sure you're as clear and concise as possible. What is your recall cue? What does it mean? Does it mean come back to you and you will get paid? I think that's probably the best approach. Uh, we have talked about uh, you, uh, where to practice, practicing in quiet places to start with, using a long line. If we need to use a long line, it's not a bad thing to use one. Um, and I, what I can do is pop a link on for some good long lines too, because I know some of them are really annoying to use. Got a scar on my thumb from using one with Ollie years ago, like just a pet shop one. He went from zero to run. Who knew Ollie could run that fast at the time? Not me. He was more like a retired greyhound. Um, you want to practice quiet places, use a long line. As your dog gets used to distractions or as you are working around distractions, make sure you're praising and, and, and marking at the moment they choose you and use movement as well. Use loads of movement. You can't use enough movement. Um, I, I think I might have posted a video in the maybe in the group the other day, I don't know what I post anymore, of me um, just walking, running up and down my garden and calling them as I'm running away. They, I mean, in the end, um, I was a different video. Do you know what? There was a video, I don't know if I shared it, someone will tell me where I'm literally just walking up and down my garden and I'm feeding them for being with me and the minute I turn, they all turn with me. And I could turn back and forth and make myself very dizzy and they just go like, oh, okay, I stay with you. It's how they are on their walks too. Um, they still explore, but you know, when they're walking with me, they follow my movement and I think that's amazing. Um, and then also, don't be the fun police was the last thing. Don't be the fun police. Be, be the fun. Be the Disneyland. Don't be the fun police while they're at Disneyland. Does anyone have any questions? Anyone at all? I'm gonna stay here for a moment. I've got Arkle with me, he's fast asleep. Um, he's being pretty good, to be fair. I don't know what I'd do if I tried to wake him up, but yeah, I, I won't wake him up, I should add. <laughs> if I was, I would wake him up and do some recall, but I think I'm gonna let sleeping puppies lie. Um, because otherwise, well, spent, Arkle spent yesterday vomiting, so I think he's still catching up on sleep, to be honest. Um, Michelle th says, uh, thanks, Sarah, that was really helpful. Oh, good, good, and please, it's helpful. It's always good to have everyone's feedback as well, um, because I know I talk a lot. <laughs> I know I talk a lot. And I talk too fast sometimes, and I know that, and I try my best to slow down. <laughs> I think it's been living with the whippets for so long. I just, like, do everything at stupid speeds. Right, if no one has any more questions, I will let you all go. Um, thank you for joining and commenting. If you have any questions, do just let me know. I think I am probably going to be, um, oh, hang on, let's comment, comment. So Esther says, I really enjoy the fact that we have a relatively good recall. Oh, thanks to you, oh, thank you. But it's good to be reminded that we need to keep it up. Yeah, I mean, it's always good to see uh, a Spaniel with a good recall. Um, I know you've worked really hard with, uh, with her, um, so. Lamba, and I think that's uh, a testament to you as well because I know spaniels can be as interesting as whippets <laughs> to get a good recall on. Um, I'll try stop taking it for granted and practice being the fun again. Yeah, yeah, I think I think that's a good good thought to take away, definitely. So what I will say before I go um, is I am finally, I know it's taken me some time, getting my um, online class list for Whippets sorted out. I am going to be setting up some puppy classes online and I will be setting up a little uh, 
recall and engagement online course, which I am very excited about. Um, and I'll probably have the details for that within seven days. I've told myself it's seven days. So I'm gonna have to stick to it. I'm not always good at sticking to my plans. I'll get it set up with dates set up ready um, because for those who don't know, I'm running online classes just for whippets and one-to-ones. Um, so do get in touch if you want the details of any of that. Um, I, I was gonna try and be mean and wake him up, but I'm just enjoying the peace from him, <laughs> which sounds just dreadful, doesn't it? Um, honestly, I won't go into too much detail, but yesterday wasn't pleasant. I'm quite enjoying the peace from him. Um, my dogs are real, it's never pleasant. Right, I'm gonna let you all go. Um, enjoy the rest of your evenings. Give me a shout if there's anything I can help with. But otherwise, thank you for joining, and um, I'm sure I'll post some more stuff soon. <laughs> Bye!